I guess one of the biggest ones would be being claustrophobic. Certain lifts too small, it, the older it is, the smaller it is, yes. and the edgier I get, and I'm yeah. very uncomfortable, and I won't get in it if there's a lot of people. Having to sit on the window side of a plane, yes. as opposed to the aisle, is a huge difference. I can't travel in the back seat of a car. Mm -hmm. The thing about phobias is that when you're asked about the one that makes the hairs on your neck stand up, it opens up a whole world of fears that you never really thought about. And if I get into a vehicle and there's no opening window, yeah. it's the end. Okay. <laughs> From anxieties and phobias to obsessive compulsive disorders, clinical psychologist Corey Ackland has seen the lot. The common ones that we see generally would be our animal phobias, uh, spiders, snakes, some um, insects, dogs. Uh, then we've got the situational phobias. Typically in that we would see a fear of heights, claustrophobia, fear of flying. Public speaking is a common one as well. And then we've got the medical phobias, so needle phobias would probably be the most common. Corey's latest weapon in the battle to overcome anxieties is bordering on brilliant. She takes your fear and drops you right in it. Where we bring in the virtual reality technology is to facilitate exposure in our most ideal way, being a gradual, prolonged and repeated experience that we might not be able to get access to easily in real life unable to go from the reptile park one hour to the top of Centrepoint Tower the next hour to on a plane the next hour in real life. Uh, but with virtual reality, I can chop and change like that really easily. By inserting the sufferer into a virtual world to confront their fear, Corrie can control the exposure of the VR experience. It means she can repeat the experience in a loop and, over time, turn up the intensity. So some of the experiences we have in here that uh, we use most commonly for claustrophobia are lifts, uh, ferris wheels, and we've got some fire escapes. Oh, OK. Any of those that you'd be interested in having a look at? I feel like the fire escape is pretty... just a, triggered something. Yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that idea that maybe the door will close and not open again. Yeah, yeah. definitely. My first response is that I actually don't like it. When you said fire escape, I thought, yeah, sounds a bit spooky, but I'm sure I can do it. But it's a little bit more confronting than I thought. Mm -hmm. I have an urge to just check one of the doors yeah. because I, from what I remember, those types of doors have those cylinders. They've got that kind of exterior mm -hmm. where you can't grab it or turn it. The virtual reality experiences can still be graduated and moderated a little bit depending on what's ideal for the client um, and then we're hoping that they're able to apply the management strategies to manage their anxiety effectively uh, and then we'll repeat that virtual reality experience over and over and over and over again to build up their confidence. The other fear that's high on my list is needles. I get vitamin B injections but dread the process. Yuck. So I can see that you've just held your breath, and you're bracing, mm. and I just need you to be able to breathe that through and let go of some of that tension, particularly the tension you're holding through your core. The needle's huge. The classic physiological symptoms that we would expect to see uh, in, in a phobia is the racing heart rate, uh, difficulty breathing, uh, tightness in the chest, uh, some shaking and, and sweating, um, sometimes culminating in a full-blown panic attack. Then when it does come to some of those medical phobias, the blood injury injection type phobias, the client may faint. It's that knowing of the pressure it's the little sting. Again, the kinds of thoughts that you're having, it makes sense why you're struggling a little bit with this experience. I wonder if there's any other way we can think about this to try to get better control over how you're feeling. Can you think of any of the benefits of getting this injection? Very good. Increased energy, mm -hmm. better brain function, mm -hmm. mood. Mm -hmm. I love a B12 shot. Virtual reality allows us to do 20 back-to-back -back injections, back -back injections. Um, and allow you to really settle in. And we're trying to get bored here, right? But how long would you recommend someone sit with this until they're comfortable? We could be sitting in here for about 20 minutes. OK. But again, we're, we're looking for the inhibitory learning. We're looking for that person to actually feel different about the situation and hopefully as well getting bored to really drum that point home.